Well, happy Friday night, Chris. It's a uh, fabulous Bye. Friday night. I'm sure there are tons of people tuning in to that uh, live address to the nation. But look, I think divided government set him up. Kevin McCarthy managed to get a deal across the line, losing only four votes. He managed to get legislation across. And it kind of set him up where he was then in the position where if he didn't negotiate with Kevin McCarthy, we were going to go into default. And I, I can understand the position of, oh, let him go into you know, default, but that will drive our economy into a recession. And he doesn't want that. You know, he was elected to be the adult in the room and to make government work. And so he came to the Oval Office tonight to remind Americans that that's what he's been doing. He's never thr sent a thrill up anyone's leg when he's talked. <laughs> he's never, you know, made everybody excited. He had a stutter, but he did get a deal. And, you know, you're going to have to make concessions. $32 trillion already, $1 trillion or so. <laughs> it's, you know, not a significant concession, probably. You don't think they're going to do this to you again next year? I know they will. I know they will. And Chris, I guess I believe that divided government is actually healthier for Americans. I, I was talking to Mick Mulvaney about this, another News Nation contributor. We're building a fantastic stable of people who just want to have honest conversations. And Mick was saying, you know, uh, even Republicans in the Trump administration were saying no one has lost uh, re-election because they've spent too much money. And so, you know, you have to, when you have divided government, it works better because you're willing to hold each other accountable more than when you have a one-party state. So I often compare Kansas to California because they do crazy things because you've got Republicans in charge in Kansas and you've got Democrats in charge in California. And so I think that this actually works better when you've got people saying, hey, should we actually be going in that much debt that it's like 250 times uh, right. Elon Musk's net worth? Minus, you know, the Twitter stuff. Right, but look, they're all fine. <laughs> just, they're all fine doing it. They're all fine doing it because it's not their money. When Trump was president, yeah, well. he was, uh, you know, like he spent like it was going out of style, like it was one of his casinos. He um, it, because he, he knew he didn't have to worry about it going into default because it's everybody else's money. And the Republicans didn't push back on that. Now they all say, oh, I didn't really like it. Yeah, somehow it magically passed, though, right? And they didn't come after the debt ceiling then, right? So I'm just saying nothing gets, nothing changes if nothing changes. And Biden just gave them exactly what he said he'd never give them again. That's all. But I get your he, he argument gave, about something's better than nothing. He gave Americans economic security because we're not careening off a cliff unnecessarily. So I think actually Americans won, and that's why he did an Oval Office address. Yeah, until they start understanding where the cuts are and who gets cut. But Johanna Masca, thank you very much. I appreciate you, as always, especially on a Friday night. All right, let's bounce to the other side now. Um, we have uh, former N Trump National Security Advisor John Bolton, who said he may run in 2024. You feel like making a little news on a Friday night? You ready to jump in after seeing what happened with this debt crisis? <laughs> you believe you could do better as president? Uh, well, I think so, but it would require getting uh, more Republicans elected. So we'll see how it goes. I'm still looking at it. I don't like what the right did here. Uh, and the left has done it in the past, but not as often as the right. Playing with the debt ceiling is dirty pool. You want to negotiate the budget, do it. Oh, yeah, but we don't have the votes. Hey, win more elections. But we saw what happened in 2011 and how it hurt us and how it hurt our credit rating and how it gave us additional borrowing expenses and how it hurt the stock market. And Biden said it would never happen again. And now here we are. Is the moral of the story, John, we just can't do better? No, I, I think people don't understand what the debt ceiling is all about. I think it's an entirely prudent thing to have. I think it's part of Congress's basic powers. Uh, and I think uh, if you look at the history of it, you, you can see that these calls to abolish the debt ceiling are part of a hundred year long process of diminishing the authority of Congress and increasing the authority of the executive branch. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.